Okay, so now we're going to talk about chapter six. Um, of course, it builds on chapter five. Um, and it's going to take us into sort of a little bit deeper idea of probability. What we did in chapter six, I think I mentioned used to be called simple probability, although we don't call it that. And, you know, and certainly it could get pretty complicated pretty quickly, um, especially as you started thinking about lots of events at a time. However, what we were talking about in that section were almost all events that were uniform, meaning each one were equally likely. So we're going to get instead to um, the idea that um, they might not be equally likely and some events might be more common than others. Um, in 6.2, which will be a separate video, we'll talk about the binomial distribution, which is a very particular um, discrete random variable that um, you'll see is actually kind of cool and comes up a lot in real world things. So anyway, a random variable is just um, this idea that we have number of numerical values to a random process. Um, we typically label them with a capital letter. So um, if we think of these as having a discrete number of outcomes, meaning that you could list them, so discrete meaning it's listable, as opposed to continuous, which means there's decimal places and stuff, um, that it can take any value in a range. Um, a discrete one is one where there's a fixed number. So like we use dice a lot as an example, but you know, a die has six sides. But if we think of a list of all Truman students, there's just a big list with whatever, 5,000 students on it, and we pull from that list the same as we would roll a die. Um, a continuous value is something like length or weight where there's gonna be decimals. And in fact, when we think mathematically, we can get as precise as we want, depending on how good of a measuring device we have. So um, discrete variables are quite different than continuous. We're gonna to get to continuous variables in chapter seven, but chapter six talks only about discrete variables. So um, all of those are random variables. And um, the idea is we're gonna take those and we're gonna make a probability distribution. And so we're gonna use this notation here um, that says um, the probability of X is equal to the probability that X equals X. And you can see how the big and small X's are sort of used. So again, the capital X is used to mean the variable and then the little X, which sometimes we put a little I next to that. Um, that's super messy. Um, we put a little I next to that to make it clear that we are um, meaning a very specific uh, uh, outcome. So we could list them all. So for instance, the probability that X equals three on our die is one sixth. So three is one of the outcomes and it has a probability one sixth. Now, if this is gonna be a properly defined discrete probability distribution, right? All the values of probability have to be between zero and one. We talked about that last time in the last chapter. And the sum of all of them has to turn out to be one. And you remember that sigma notation means you add them all up. There are several ways we can explain them. Um, and of course, um, the trick is, is to figure out whether or not a random variable is actually um, a discrete distribution. And you can figure these out by, first of all, making sure they're all between zero and one. So in this case, that one clearly is not. And then you can add them up to see if they sum to one or not. And if they don't, then they're not a random variable. But if they do, then they are. So um, last time we talked about this idea of the two dice outcomes. And we can write all of those outcomes on a page. And so here's that Google Sheet that we had before. And um, we had both um, we had both uh, one die, which is of course boring. And in fact, I don't even think I wrote it down. The idea that each outcome happens one time in six, but then we could think about two dice together, which gave us these different outcomes, which could happen a different number of times. You remember in the book, I pulled up the little diagram and each one of those has a different probability of success. Well, that's the beginning of a probability distribution. You can see that all of these probabilities are in fact between zero and one and they add up to a hundred. See, I just did the little sum command there to get that. So this is one description of a random variable and actually this one you don't really think of as part of the random variable. Um, but the idea that you have a list of outcomes and the probabilities for each. So this chart describes a random variable. Okay, and 
here, um, the slides, again, I'm using Dr. Love's uh, slides. Um, she shows you not only the probability as a fraction instead of a decimal like I did, but she turns that into a histogram as well. And this is called a probability histogram, which is actually a pretty useful um, thing to look at. Um, and you can see how the things that are more likely have the higher bars. And from that, we can figure out how uh, these outcomes uh, really work. Now, we could make the same thing with an empirical probability. Remember, we talked about collecting data last week. And so if we did that, we could actually make that. Of course, it wouldn't be perfect as we did that. So next up is to think about the idea about the mean of a random variable. Now, we already talked about the mean of a sample or the mean of a population. And as we did that, we um, added them all up and divided by how many there were. So we could write that out like this, x1 times 1 over n. 1 over n is actually the probability of each thing happening in a way. So when we go to a discrete idea, we just write the formula like this. So the mean is equal to each outcome times the probability of each of those outcomes. So if we come over here, back to our spreadsheet, this is actually pretty easy to calculate. So it's just going to be the outcome times the probability of each outcome. So 1 times a sixth, of course, isn't very interesting. 2 times a sixth is going to be 2 sixths or a third. 3 times a sixth is going to be a half. And of course, since I did the dollar sign, we can work that all out. Notice that even though the probabilities are equal, these uh, outcomes, which are the probability of x times the value of x, x sub i, I was calling it. OK? To calculate the mean, all we do is we add that up. So the average roll for a single die is three and a half. Now, that's a little bit surprising maybe because three and a half, of course, isn't on any of the sides of the dice. And you'd like to think that the average roll would be at least one of the possible outcomes. Turns out that's not true at all. It does make some sense, though, because we know that the average of two dice is seven. We talked about that last time. I'm going to calculate it here in a second. So the average of one die should be half of that. And if you figure that each of these six outcomes are equally likely. If we add those all together, 11 and divide by three, we get three and a half, it adds up to 21 as we do that. So again, arithmetically, that's kind of annoying, but to calculate it's not very hard. Well, we can do the same thing here. We just take each outcome times the probability. So now we have that 2.78% times two, and we can drag that down and do that for all of them. And like I said, it's not so surprising that the average of rolling two dice is a seven. Um, because the things are symmetric, the mean, median, and mode are all the, about the same. In this case, they're all right there up at the top. Um, for the single die, right, it's uniform, so you can't really do that. So the probability of x is equal to, uh, I'm sorry, the average of a random variable is going to be the value of each number, so each number on the die times the probability of that number. So she does that here, and she recreates that. Again, she uses fractions, but we could add that up again. Now, this is a theoretical probability. So you remember in chapter three, we calculated the empirical probability of actual data that we have. Now, in theory, if our, data, if our dice are in fact fair, if we did this a whole bunch of times and calculated the mean, we would expect the mean would be seven or at least pretty close to it. We know that in reality, that might not happen. The dice might not be fair, but it also might just be that random things are random. Now, a little bit more complicated is to calculate the standard deviation of a random variable. You remember that's the idea of how far away from normal a typical value would be. Again, the formula we can see here is going to be, it's the difference from each value minus the mean squared, add them all up and square root them. So again, the formula I think looks a little tricky we write this often as sigma sub x, so that we know that it's the standard deviation of the random variable. Calculation-wise, right, we're going to take the mean and we're going to calculate how far each value is from the mean. Well, we just calculated the mean. Maybe we can do it for one die first. That's going to be equal to 1, that's the value, minus the mean. I'm going to put the dollar sign in here. 
So in this case, right, the first calculation, well, a one is two and a half away from three and a half. It's negative. So that's just subtraction, not too hard to do. We could take the average of that. It's actually not very interesting because if we add these all up, since they're all, oops, equals, um, if we add these all up, they're going to cancel out. So they're going to be zero. So that's actually not something we really do. And again, we can do the same thing here. We'll take one minus that mean. And again, two minus seven is five is probably not that exciting to you. And again, we're going to get this nice symmetric structure. Of course, uh, seven is the mean, so seven minus seven is zero. And again, if we added those up, we'd get them equal to one. Okay, well, that's what each one of these is. So the next step we do is we square them all. Lazy here, we just put that squared. And of course, that's easy to do in a spreadsheet. All the, these ones are even easier because they're whole numbers. Notice all the minus signs go away. We still have this nice symmetric shape here and here as well. Those are all symmetric. So now we've calculated each of these values here squared. Well, the next step then is to multiply them times the probability. Well, again, we have all of those. Um, because right, we already know the probability. So to just take this value times the probability, oop, get you that value. Let me get rid of some of the decimal points here, because that's a lot of decimal points. Oops, there we go. But again, it's just multiplication. So even though the formula looks kind of scary, we've done each term in the formula pretty straightforward, right? So we took each value, subtracted the mean, squared it, and multiplied it by the probability. Okay, then the last part is we add them all up. Then we take the square root and that's the last step. Square root is just SQRT in the spreadsheet. So we get a standard deviation of 1.70, oh, whatever, how many decimals we have? Oops, let's go a couple more decimals. There we go. Okay, so we can recreate that here for two dice. Use our zoop to get that calculated. Oops, I didn't make the screen just quite big enough. There we go. Um, so again, we're going to add those up. And we're going to calculate the square root of that number. So that is going to be our standard deviation. That's going to be our mean. Okay, so standard deviation is going to be interpretable in pretty much the same way that we did it before. It's a measure of how far away we expect values to be from the mean. Again, it has that squared thing going on. So that means that outliers and weird things um, are more powerful, they're more important. You can see here that the extreme values have a larger effect on the overall value. Here it's a little bit weirder because the probabilities are so small and then the values are big. So they sort of kind of cancel out and the values are not actually um, all that different. Notice that seven has a zero because of course it's exactly at the mean. So whatever you do to it, it's gonna stay as a zero. Okay, and again, Calculation-wise, doing it as a fraction actually makes even a little bit more sense to look at the idea that we take each value times the probability um, at the beginning, and that's how we calculate the mean. Then we take the value minus that mean, so the mean was seven, so two minus seven is minus five, minus four minus three all the way. Square those numbers. Again, you can do that in your head. Five squared is 25, four squared is 23. Then we take that value times this value here. So again, this is doing with fraction notation, just what we did here with the spreadsheet. Of course, in practice, the spreadsheet's the way to go, especially if you have a very big one. Then 
we just add them all up and take the square root. And that's how we get our actual value. Now, we could do the same thing for other data sets. So for instance, um, this is how many games were played in the World Series. And you can see that it's not the same. 38% of the time they go to seven games. And we could go ahead and calculate that. And again, it's not hard. It's just annoying to do, especially if you're doing it by hand. We can average those values and get the mean. So the mean of that uh, standard deviation, we can calculate the mean, the standard deviation. So on average, 5.8 games are played with standard deviation 1.15. All right, um, in the next chapter, we'll talk about uh, um, chapter 6.2, the binomial distribution, which is a very particular discrete random case.